Okay, in this video we're just going to quickly go through some of the work from last week, which was I think week five, looking at food webs. So the pond is the habitat of the stickleback, the heron is the predator of the stickleback. The pond has a low biodiversity because it has a low number of species. All of the sticklebacks make up one population because they're of the same species. All of the plants and animals in the ponds make up a community because that is all of the populations. The pond itself um, and all of the living organisms inside it are the, um, the ecosystem. So that's the physical environment, the abiotic factors and the community which gives you the ecosystem. The next thing um, is the food chains. So in this food web, the grass is a producer I'm going to go with. So a producer is a green plant. Uh, apparently that is correct. So uh, it's a green plant at the bottom of the food chain. It takes the light energy from the sun and um, allows that to be transferred to the consumers. Uh, in the same food web, the fox is a is going to be a consumer. It's going to be a predator. It's going to be a carnivore. So any of those it is a carnivore. Look at that I'm right here. Uh, rearrange the following list of organisms into an order for their food chain. So um, you don't need to use all of them. You just need to start with a producer. So um, you can start with seaweed. Um, I would then suggest possibly going to crab, then to squid, then to penguin, then to seal. Um, if you only made a food chain using maybe three of the uh, the individuals, so maybe seaweed, to crab, um, to squid, then that would also be okay. And um, here we are in the the notes. So we'll just wait until it loads. Or we'll just come out and do it without it being a presenter. So food webs and interactions. So as we said, the food chain always starts with a producer. Um, the producer is always eaten by something like a herbivore, um, which is a primary consumer. The primary consumer is then eaten by a secondary consumer, which is, in this case, we, we don't know it's an omnivore. If there was an arrow that went from the producer to the, um, the blue tent, then we would know it was an omnivore. From this, we only know it is a carnivore because it eats this, um, this grub here, the caterpillar. Um, we know it's a predator because it's eating the caterpillar, which makes the caterpillar a prey species. Um, the blue tit itself is a prey species for the hawk, which is the tertiary consumer. So it's like school. You've got primary school, secondary school, and then technically things like college and university are tertiary. So primary, secondary, tertiary. Here we go. Uh, using these clues, could you build a food web on the next page? So we have something that looks a little bit like this. So we have the producers. Um, we have the oh, some idiots put the arrows the wrong way around. Uh, if we assume the arrows are the other way around, um, so um, the oak tree is being um, the acorns that are eaten by blue tits. The blue tits energy doesn't appear to go anywhere in our food chain. Um, the energy from the sunflower goes to the rabbit, the energy from the grass goes to the rabbit. So if you've taken these sentences and um, you've drawn an arrow from the producer to its consumer, then you get the mark. Um, if the caterpillars were killed by an insecticide, which other species would be affected? So in ours, if the caterpillars were killed by an insecticide, the blue tit would be affected because its food source is now half as big as it was before. So if the caterpillars are gone, that means that more sunflowers will be eaten. So their numbers will go down. Um, if the caterpillars were eaten and the blue tits were unable to make up their food uh, using the sunflower, then their numbers might go down and that might affect the hawk. So there's lots of different things that you can say. If you remove one thing from an ecosystem, it can affect other things as well. If the number of rabbits decreased, how would this affect the number of blue tits? So in our example, if the number of rabbits were decreased, so rabbits eat sunflowers uh, and they are competing with blue tits. If we decrease the number of rabbits, that means there's more food for the blue tits, so their numbers will probably go up. Um, 
and if the number of sunflowers increased, how would this impact the number of caterpillars? So again, um, in our food web, it doesn't affect the number of caterpillars. So if you've got an arrow going from caterpillars to sunflower seeds, then obviously um, there'd be some kind of effect there. Um, although if you uh, increase the number of sunflowers, this might increase the number of blue tits, which therefore will mean more caterpillars will get eaten. So it's just think about the food chain and think about how everything will be affected. Um, hopefully that makes sense. If there's anything from that that doesn't make sense, please do get in contact.